Welcome, everybody. I'm Eric, call sign N1JUR, and welcome to another episode of N1JUR Amateur Radio. Today, I have got another three more uh, iOS uh, ham radio apps that uh, might be of interest to you. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that if you haven't already caught my playlist, I have up here in the left hand corner um, a link where you can catch all of my other additional iOS applications uh, for ham radio uh, that hopefully, uh, you know, one or two of those might, uh, you know, be useful to you. So um, with that also, you know, I know I have a bunch of uh, subscribers who are Android users and fear not, I am working to put together a playlist uh, and a couple of video series for you Android folks. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into my first app, which is going to be a QTH Compass. This app is a very simple app. I'm going to say that there are some very basic features in it, but don't let that fool you. Uh, again, it's a free app on uh, the iOS app store. But one thing I really love about the application is it's easy layout and, you know, some of the tools that I look for in applications for tracking and grid squares and things of that nature are pretty much, you know, within a, a finger's touch away. You know, the one thing I love about this app is that it provides, you know, based off your GPS location, the altitude of where you might be at. So a lot of times if I'm operating at a park and I'm curious to see, you know, elevation, um, this app can provide that uh, literally at a moment's glance. You can do calculations on distances. So if you wanted to figure out how far Washington, New Hampshire was from my current location, um, it would give you the degrees based off of the uh, compass there and the rotator. Um, and then at the same time, uh, it gives you the total mileage away um, from that location. So if you're maybe looking up a park and you want to find out how far that contact is away from you, um, because you might uh, you know, need that information and where this application I think would be really, really good is if you're a rove and you you like to do roving and contesting, something like this would be able to provide you some really good data. You know, the other thing that I really like is like if you want to find a grid square, so if you want to do uh, FN uh, 22 and we'll just hit return and see, this will pull up that grid square um, where it's physically located in New York and how far it might be. It calculates all of that stuff for you. And so it's really, really beneficial in a great tool I could see where if I was out uh, doing a VHF UHF contest rove um, or I was doing a rove in general for an HF contest, this would provide me um, some very quick, um, you know, uh, location distance details, especially if I was trying to track a, a grid square or I was trying to uh, activate something. I could also see this be a really beneficial if you uh, were you doing satellite work because in essence, you know, satellites use a lot of uh, grid squares. And if you wanted to find out where that grid square was located from where your current location is, um, it can pull that information up pretty quickly. The other big benefit is that I love about this is that you can see that it will provide you your Latin lawn and every um, little bit of information there. So, you know, from an app standpoint, it's it's got a lot of, um, you know, good features in it for what it's providing. And, you know, I, I happen to use it and love it. Um, it's replaced a couple of my other apps that kind of provided some of that detail in different locations, uh, primarily begin by its simplicity. So if you're looking for that app, that's going to provide you some great controls to finding grid squares, you know, distance and elevation. This is an app you probably want to definitely look into. So this is a QTH locator. Um, and, or sorry, QTH Compass. And, um, you know, it's one of those ones you probably want to have in your uh, arsenal of uh, ham radio apps. So let's uh, check out to the next one. This next app is um, uh, one of two loggers that I'm going to review. And this one, um, you know, is a no frills um, Poda Soda type logger. And so we're going to get into it. The app I'm referring to is QSO Mate. Um, this has been around for a little while, um, and it is a very simplistic POTA logger. In terms of you know setting it up, uh, they really only offer three options, a generic log, a POTA style log, or a soda style log. And you can just simply go into the app and you can, um, fire up uh, the two application types. So say like we're going to set up a new POTA, and we want to set up a new park here. You know, you can just go in and Enter in the park number 4950 is one that I know of, and it will find that and say I'm doing two parks and I want to do US um, 
3890 we'll say that's just another one and it does an auto look up i can just add that so you can add multiple parks like you normally expect the file um or the file type log a name automatically logs it by date um, and puts in the data that you need and then you just hit save and then at this point you just put in your frequency and you have to use the decimal point to, to make it specific your power you know if you're running 100 watts and then you can start to you know enter in call signs and the nice part about it is the keyboard is auto recognized so um, you have all of the access to the most frequently used keys when entering call signs so i can do um, say KC1QDK as a call sign. So say I'm working them and uh, it does an auto look up and then I can just basically tap um, into the next field and you know put it as a five nine and a five nine. Um, and then once I'm done, I just hit save and go to the next call. And so, you know, it is, um, a, like I said, a no frills logger. Um, it doesn't, you know, obviously slack in the areas that you'd expect it to. So like say I was actually working a park to park and I wanted to find or I, the park to park came up, I can just tap the park to park details and it will actually insert the data there for me. So I don't have to cut and paste or I don't have to uh, do a lookup or, or do any of that, the, the manual stuff to be able to putting into park to park details. And then at that point, um, I can just, you know, uh, go up to the very top and hit save. You know, from there, um, I have, uh, you know, a couple other features, but in essence, if I wanted to, um, you know, I could, easily uh, go in and edit, you know, any of the saved logs that I might have uh, edited. Um, at the same time, if I want to, I think there is an export option, but in essence, um, that does all the typical integrations, pulling in the Spoda, the Poda spots page and soda spots. Uh, you can put in a call details. And the nice part is you can just pull that up at a moment's notice and see what's been going on and what activities have been going on. Um, and then from here, this is where you would actually, I think, um, I can go in here and um, highlight the export log and just go to export and then I can export this file via ADF um, and I can send this to whatever feature or uh, app I want to be able to export the log to. And again, it's, it's just a very no frills um, POTA or SOTA type logger uh, on your uh, smartphone uh, device. And so if you're looking for one of those apps that's you know not uh, either Hammers or Polo, this is a uh, one that kind of sits right there in the middle and might be a, a good option for you, especially if you're just looking for a quick, uh, you know, logging uh, tool for an activation or spur of the moment activation. So that is a uh, QSOMATE and uh, make sure you check out that link down in the description below. My last app, I'm going to put a little caveat on. I'm going to do a full review of this app once it finally um, becomes production. Uh, it's currently in beta. I, I want to state that it doesn't mean that it's any less feature rich, um, but I usually like to review apps that, you know, have uh, kind of uh, moved from beta to production and have been kind of finalized uh, because most people aren't going to be in the developers uh, program uh, on iOS uh, or Android. So uh, it's something just to kind of keep in mind that it is forthcoming, but there are a boatload of reviews already out there for this app. It's called Polo. Um, for those that uh, know of it and have seen it, it's the portable ham radio logger. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to just touch on a very high level of this. If you want to find out more, I'll leave links uh, in the description down below of uh, other reviews from other YouTubers uh, on the Polo app itself. Uh, but in essence, uh, I'll do a full review like I mentioned before when uh, we finally uh, have it go to production. I love Polo. So in terms of my new logger, uh, even though it's in development uh, and in a beta stage, uh, I love it. I have never had any issues with it. It's done uh, a lot of great things. Uh, I'm going to touch on just some of the high level stuff. Um, and again, um, we'll do a full review uh, on it. So just in terms of just editing logs and QSOs, uh, you know, setting up, uh, you know, simple things like trying to find your location. You know, the app is uh, context aware and knows how to you know, find your grid square. You know, say I'm doing multiple parks, I can do a quick lookup on. So I'm in the area and, you know, it pulls up that list based off a of GPS location of what park I might be in. And I can select multiple parks from that list just by adding them up to the top. And then now those are added. Um, and say, may I, I'm doing um, an ARL field day or summits on the air, I can add those into as well. And then once I'm done with that, I can go over say to the spotting page and find, you know, or see what's going on in terms of spots. Um, but let's just say I wanna get right into logging here. I can just go right into QSOs. Um, I can set up, um, you know, 
uh, a link to um, you know what band I might be on uh, and what frequency. So say like we're on 14200, um, and it's actually quite context aware, so you don't have to worry about decimal points and things of that nature. Um, the developer's done a really great job in being able to make things very easy and quick to be able to get through. So. So say like I want to, you know, add in uh, other, uh, you know, contact here. DK is an example. You'll see that it's pulled up uh, where they are, how far they're away. There's a lot of awesome features that I love about this um, in terms of, you know, the logging capability. So as you, if you get a chance to pull down Poder, you'll find this uh, and a great feature. One of my one things I love is you know, knowing how long between contacts, especially, you know, you know, a solar cycle that we have right currently right now, you know, we're finding there's a lot of solar storms. So band conditions tend to be tough. I, I get an idea when I'm using Polo that, uh, you know, I can see that from my last contact to this contact has been a span of six minutes or whatever be the case. So it provides you nice context aware information, uh, both on contacts that you might've worked. So as you start to really add to this program, another feature that is really cool is that you know, if I've worked this person before on a previous log, the app is context aware. It knows that I've worked, you know, KC1 QDK uh, in a previous activation and I'm reworking them again and it will notify me in the app. Um, and park to parks are, you know, simple as just, you know, typing in, you know, say the park is one, two, three, four or 3408 is an example, or 3480. Um, it's gonna tell you how far it is, what the name of the park name is, so you can confirm with you know the contact there of the other park to park. Um, and you can just simply add it to the, the list there. And then, you know, it, the details and the time spent on this app is, is, is now made logging, the level of logging like way up here. And so if you haven't downloaded it and you don't mind, you know, fooling around beta software and you want to be part of the Apple beta developers program, you can just sign up for that real quick and uh, go through those steps. But uh, if you're like myself and you prefer to wait you know, and have a production ready app, then, uh, you know, uh, wait for my review on that one and I'll go into full detail on that. So that is uh, Polo. And again, you know, is a uh, one of those apps that I can't wait till it finally, you know, airs itself to production. So. There's that. There you go. Uh, hope these three apps will maybe help solve some of the challenges you might have uh, in your ham radio journey. Um, as always, you know, if there's an app uh, you'd like me to review, um, or maybe you have a couple of suggests that uh, you want us to showcase on the, another apps video, then you can do two things. You can either email me at n1jur.nh at gmail.com, uh, or you can comment below and I'll make sure uh, we get it into our next video. And as always, you know, make sure you like, subscribe, and share uh, with other hams as it will get it in front of uh, maybe the ham curious or those that could benefit from this content. Um, and again, thanks for watching. Uh, and as always, 7-3.